Hello everybody, it's Clash with Gam here once again for a Black Lodge Clan War recap. And in this war, we faced off against um, this Chinese clan. Uh, I, I'm not sure what uh, what uh, what their name translates to, but uh, yeah, this is this is who we faced. Did these guys go to a different clan? Oh, that's yeah, they did. Huh. Yeah, I don't think this was like a hunt though, but it lost a lot of members, I guess, after he beat them. It looks like, um, yeah. Uh, so this was a good war for us. Uh, for them, they only put up two Town Hall 10 three stars on um, Chill and Visvim, who are both very low bases. Um, so I'm not going to show those. Uh, and then on our side, we did get the perfect war. Uh, most of the bases they ran weren't. Uh, terrific, but they weren't bad either, so we did uh, put in the extra effort to make sure we got the perfect war. Um, if you look at war events, we got it with uh, a few attacks to spare, so we had one, two, three, and then one that we used, so we had four, we had four, we had four, four, uh, or, yeah, so it was pretty good. Uh, so we're going to get into the replays. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to show you this attack on number 5 by T-Smith, which is in my personal uh, top 3 raids in Clash of Clans that I've ever seen. So just real <laughs> enjoy this one. It's pretty It's pretty nuts. Probably not much to learn from it, because it would, be, uh, would be too difficult to pull off for anyone else. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's a beauty and should be watched by everyone. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is 28 freaking minions in his troop bar, which is highly unusual for a three-star army. Uh, in fact, it's definitely the most I've ever seen. And uh, its attack starts off a bit slow here with a really long queen walk, and you'll see... Uh, see what he does. So he sends in a loon over here. The uh, The purpose of this loon is to trade one for one with that uh, with that cannon there, which it's going to successfully do. Takes out the cannon just before the wizard tower kills it. Uh, drops a rage spell so that his enemy, his queen won't die to the enemy queen. And then this queen's going to take out a few more defenses before the enemy king uh, throws down a poison spell. I imagine either he phases. Oh no, he, he didn't phase. Uh, she had plenty of life. It was the uh, the king's life I was watching go down, not the queen's. He drops a minion on the uh, builder's hut there. That minion's going to be used to help eliminate the pups from behind a little bit faster. To save the queen a couple of shots, because every queen shot is a, is a lot of damage. Now she's going to finish off the last pup, and then start going inside. He's deployed a golem to tank for his queen, and has now thrown down a rage spell to uh, give him both a little bit more oomph. Closing in this inferno tower, the queen is starting to lose a little bit of life because the healer can't heal through the inferno, but the inferno goes down, so the healer is going to start doing her thing again. Uh, King takes out the second air defense of the lure. Queen's uh, hitting the clan castle, gonna go to the Tesla and then to the expo, I presume. Uh, meanwhile, he started minions on the backside. All of this uh, was a 2 minute 20 seconds into the raid before he started deploying uh, his main loon and hound part of his army. Two lava hounds and seven balloons for this main section. Extremely nice free spell. Now that free spell is gonna be utilized to uh, allow his queen to live so she can take down the uh, remaining inferno. Two of the Inferno strands are on the uh, uh, healers, which help the loons not get hurt. Now he puts on the rest of his minions with a rage spell, and these rage minions are going to take out the back air defense, which is just the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I've never seen anyone else do anything like that with, with the raged back end minions. It was ridiculous. Um, now we're going to check out a couple other raids. Uh, yeah, let's start Lexards on number one. This was a nice raid uh, from pretty early on in the war. 
Uh, this base design is a little bit outdated. You can tell because this air defense is only behind one wall, but I think the king might be in range, so it might not be that bad of a design. But anyway, it's a ground attack, so that's not going to come into play. Trips one giant bomb, uh, tosses down a jump spell. Now I imagine here the golems are going to trip another giant bomb. Yep. Which they do. And uh, his queen is uh, Fuxi style. People like to call it these days after the Chinese clan. Uh, Fuxi style walking around the base doing her, her thing and uh, meanwhile, the giants in the core and the golems and the king are all nice and raged. Raged giants in the core do a real uh, real nice amount of damage. Giant bomb triggered on those giants. Uh, hogs pathing pretty nicely through the core. Uh, double or giant bomb goes off, but the heal goes down in time. And now all of his giants are pathing the last inferno, and hopefully they will take it out before the hogs get into range, which it looks like they might just do as it's lower and lowering in health. Uh, attacking Queen is still alive and looks like she's going to take down this Expo for just before her death, or if not, she'll get very close. Yeah. So she weakens it up for the Hogs, and the Hogs take care of the last defense, helped, of course, by the two cleanup balloons. So really a nice attack from Lexard. Uh, Use the Queen to eliminate a giant bomb and, uh, like, really three compartments Took out all of the core pretty much with the uh, the golems and the giants, and then the hogs cleaned up the other half of the base. Uh, now let's check out another attack. Let's check out. Uh, let's try to find an air air raid. There should be an air raid. Yeah. So we'll watch this uh, this air raid by Requiem, Rec, and. Uh, the wreck is going to wreck this base. Sorry for that, but I, I had to do it. Uh, yeah. So this is another base with, this one has two uh, exposed air defenses. So this is definitely a bit of an older design, and it's not very weak to lightning, it doesn't look like. And uh, while we watch this raid, probably something, ooh, sorry, I should have opened up this episode with, uh, big news in the Black Lodge is that we are announcing or undergoing or have undergone, I guess, uh, a merge with Hebrew Legends. Uh, now, I'm sure you have all heard of Hebrew Legends before, or maybe not all of you, but most of you have. Uh, probably best known for um, beating Clash Heads uh, about uh, two months ago now. Uh, they've run into a little bit of difficulty with uh, some of their leadership stepping down, and we've been allied clans for a few months now, so uh, I think we decided that the best thing to do for each clan was similar to the Exclusive Empire and Victory Matters merger, um, taking the majority of the 40-40 the Town Hall 10 accounts from Hebrew Legends and bringing them to the Black Lodge. And uh, working on slowly converting the Black Lodge into an all Town Hall 10 clan in preparation for Town Hall 11, where we would then become a mixed clan of Town Hall 10s and Town Hall 11s, where because we believe that uh, there won't be much of a mixed uh, Town Hall 9 scene, kind of like how uh, Town Hall 8s don't competitively war anymore, just because it's uh, it's too easy, really for a Town Hall 8 or more. Uh, doesn't, there isn't much uh, skill to differentiate between a, a poor or a mid-ground Town Hall 8 and the best Town Hall 8 in the game. They, you know, they should both six-star or fresh hits every single war. And that's uh, kind of the direction that we believe Town Hall 9 will go uh, once Town Hall 11 is out. Yeah, so, because right now, uh, Town Hall 9s, there is a huge amount of skill in Town Hall 9. Uh, the best Town Hall 9s will 6-star fresh pretty much every single war, and, you know, mediocre ones will uh, have to wait for cleanup to get their 3-stars, or they'll, you know, their 3-star their rate will only be 50% or less on fresh hits. 
in Town Hall 10, there's obviously a, a massive skill gap between medi- mediocre Town Hall 10s who can't uh, three-star Town Hall 10s at all to ridiculous ones who can do, like, close to 10 triples in a single war, which is just ridiculous. Um, so now, uh, after we just talked about Town Hall 9s, we are going to check out some Town Hall 9 raids. We're going to watch uh, three this time. Three Town Hall 10 raids, three Town Hall 9 raids. Um, it's going to be hopefully a little bit of a shorter video because the next war uh, is going to be a very, very, very long video because we had a very, very interesting war. I'm not going to spoil any more of it, but uh, if, you're, uh, if you're following the top war clan scene, uh, I'm sure you've already heard about what's happened in that war. It's a very fun war, and I will bring you... Uh, I think I will bring every single attack of that war uh, to this channel. I might not comment over all of it, and I might uh, speed through some of it, uh, but I will sh- I'll show every every replay of on all seventy bases. I'm not going to show fails, you know, but I'll show the top replay of each base uh, because there was a lot to learn from that war, and it was. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, Filthy, otherwise known as uh, General Maximus, this is his, he has two Max Town Hall 9 accounts. Uh, making his way through this base here, his queen's still alive, his wizards are trying their best to ruin the raid by popping the CC Hound. Uh, saving 10 hogs and 2 heals, this light of the raid is really nice, I like that. Kind of a half surgical approach. Uh, but he likes to be really heavy on his hogs, and it looks like uh, he definitely could have three spelled here. But uh, three spelling is cool and all. But I also like to uh, see when players make sure to use all their spells just to be careful, you know, uh, because you never know when something like you know this this hound popping over here and that poison was beautiful uh, can mess up your raid at the end. Uh, now next we'll watch, uh, watch Skari's raid here. Skari is one of our newer uh, Town Hall 9s. He joined less than a month ago, I believe, or about a month ago. And uh, he's been doing really well with us. He's leveled up his heroes really fast. I think he joined at about 2020, and he's 30, 25 already. And you can uh, already see... Yeah, the difference that makes. Sometimes people say at Town Hall 9, heroes above 20 don't really matter. And I agree with that to a point. Uh, if you're doing cleanup hits, probably 15, 15 heroes are uh, plenty to make sure you can 6-star cleanup every war. But if you're not doing cleanups, you're doing fresh hits, uh, for 15, 15 is just not going to cut it. Uh, 20, 20, you're probably going to be all right. 25-25, you're looking good. 30-30 is going to help you immensely uh, with fresh heads. It just gives you a big, you know, a much larger margin of error. You might have a player who, with 25-25 heroes, has about, let's say, a 60% fresh hit rate. Uh, upgrading your heroes to 30-30 are gonna, is going to raise your fresh hit rate, to, I'd say, at least from 60% to 75 or 80 percent uh it's gonna make a lot of uh close calls you know not so close and it's just gonna generally swing things in your in your general favor so this is a Laloon raid and he started his Laloon portion as a golem still alive in the center of the base with uh his attacking queen who has her ability still left excuse me <coughs> And I imagine he will use that ability to clear out this uh, this compartment here with air defense. Probably target the gold storage. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna haste his loons over, so he's not even gonna get a chance to do that. <laughs> uh, but his queen's gonna be smart and walk around to this other side of the base and help take care of these last few defenses. So yeah, perfect example here of a level thirty queen just you know doing work. And if it's a level 25 queen, it would have taken her longer to get through the hound earlier. It would have taken her longer to get through the gold storages earlier to get to the defenses. Uh, 
it's just overall very worth it if you can uh, if you afford the gems or the downtime to get the levels up. Uh, very worth it at Town Hall 9, and not just Town Hall 10 to max your heroes. So now we'll show one more raid, a very special raid from this war. It's one of the first raids. Where is it? <laughs> Might not have been as early as I thought it was. I swear it was. Maybe it wasn't this war. No, it was definitely this war. Yep, no, okay. Uh, no, that's not it. Sorry about this. Yep, here it is. 99% on this base. So, I'm showing this for no other reason but to publicly humiliate TGG for, the, for this raid. That's all I'm doing. Nothing to learn here other than don't do this yourself. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do this. Because you might think it's a 45k base. You might think it's a, it's a fairly easy war. Uh, you might think you'll 3-star anyway. But, but you won't. You'll get you'll get a ninety nine percent one star. And this is a, actually another very poignant example of thirty thirty heroes. If he had thirty thirty heroes, this would have been a three star. But he doesn't. So his foolishness, I guess. Uh yeah did cost him. So you get the idea of what happened here. Just stupidity. So yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, get excited for the next video, which should be out uh, less than 24 hours from this one, I plan on, at least. Uh, definitely less than 48. And that war really set some records for mixed wars, for sure. So, yeah. Uh, pretty good stuff. Lots of, lots of fun attacks to watch. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you're there to see the next one. It's been Clash with Gam. Have a nice day.